Welcome back to the AWS Santa Clara Summit, coming at you live from the middle of the expo room. My name is Nikki, I'm a senior technical evangelist for AWS. You can find me on Twitch at a lot of hours of the day. <laughs> and uh, please introduce yourself. Hey, good afternoon everybody. My name is Quint Van Diemen. I'm the uh, business development manager here at AWS for our identity and directory services. Am, who are you? Me? I, I don't know most days. I'm Am Gravelny. I'm also a technical evangelist on, on your team specifically. My team specifically. Your, you own the team. Let's be real. Okay. Yeah. I own the box right now. You do? <laughs> so, we are going to talk about helper. service control policies today. Thank you, Quint, for joining us. Absolutely. Excited Before to be here. Before we talk about the recent launch, let's briefly discuss AWS organizations yeah. for a little bit. Can you tell us what it is and how, is it, how, how has it evolved over time and, and why it exists really? Like, what are our sure. customers asking uh, for? Absolutely. So, you know, most AWS customers, especially these days, have lots of AWS accounts, right? What, in the early days, you might have just had one, but now you might have accounts for dev, test, and prod, or you might have even much finer gr degrees of separation for per business unit, even per application, right? Yep. And so we need a way to manage and govern those accounts, and that's what AWS organizations is all about. And it essentially has two big components to it, or two big aspects. One is it provides some services, or some features of the service itself, like we'll talk about today with service control policies. But it's also increasingly becoming the service or the platform by which other cool AWS services get to integrate and provide their multi-account experiences to our customers through one unified platform. So services like CloudTrail or AWS Config, these other things, and instead of a customer having to go and do those, use those services in each and every ind account individually, they can now use them in one place through AWS organizations. So besides just like general management, what other challenges do our customers face when it comes to governance? Sure, so probably the first and foremost, and one that we'll definitely drill into today, right, is customers want uh, ways to be able to set broad guardrails, broad rules about the types of services they want their, their uh, developers and their users to be able to use in their AWS accounts, right? Uh, and then, you know, layering in, and, and what's the really exciting stuff that we'll talk about today is now the enhanced levels of granularity with which they're able to, to specify those controls. So it's all about kind of a central team being able to set, set good, big, uh, good, broad guardrails for what kind of goes on in these AWS accounts. This might seem a little obvious, but do you think we might want to mention why other people might have multiple AWS accounts? Right? Yes, it's a great sure, question. Sure, sure, absolutely, right? So an AWS account at its purest level is a container for resources, right? So all the great EC2 instances, the Redshift clusters, the you know, the you know, all that great stuff goes in an account. Right. And by default, it's this nice little isolation boundary. It's isolated from the humans, it's isolated from the resources, it's isolated from the networks, right? And we give lots of customers good ways to poke holes and tie things together, but uh, at, right out of the gate, they, they provides just a nice, clean isolation boundary that many of our customers really enjoy, just to kind of keep things separated and, and uh, in order. Does makes make sense, sense when you're building an application and you want to run dev, right. test, prod, exactly. that type of, exactly. of setup, right? Exactly. To have fully separate AWS accounts. Right. But then you still want to do things like have consolidated billing, you want to have consolidated cloud Absolutely. trail, right? Absolutely. Uh, and you just add these to an organization. Is that that's exactly about the point, it? right? Is, is okay. So uh, there's, there's, again, the one set of features that's about kind of controlling what customers can do in those accounts, and that's kind of that's the governance piece. And then the management piece is, as you said, you don't want to have to have somebody go and set up CloudTrail in every account and yep. then be sure that it's really right. And like this is just to press it once, apply it in one place, and you know that it's good, and you know that it's immutable in all those other places. And cool. So, so Quint. Cool. Yes. What did you launch two days ago? Awesome. And also, Mew9 wants to tell you that he loves your accent. Uh, so, uh, the question back has got to be, where is my accent from? Because he said I, it's always good to see someone with a southern accent. In okay, the okay, position. okay. In the right striking zone. So I'm from Virginia Beach. So it's like this weird mix of like surfer kid meets uh, southern town. So there you go, Mew9. Uh, okay, cool. So um, what did you launch? So we launched uh, granular service control policies, right? And uh, service control policies or SCPs. Uh, were formerly this tool that you could apply uh, through policy in your organization to specify which services and which actions within those services 
the, the different individuals within the account could use. Right? So like from a broad level. Yeah, so if game sh if game lift wasn't the service for you and account XYZ, you could turn it on or turn it off. Oh, right? cool. So that people can't even see it in their account. Exactly. But what we, re we launched two days ago was enhanced granularity in three new ways. Uh, support for uh, conditions, support for resources, and support for what's known as non-action, which is kind of like an exclusionary thing. And, and if you boil all that down and make it super simple, now we'll be able to do things like turn on or off entire AWS regions, or uh, say things like, I've got, I want to centrally deploy some critical roles into my account, and I, want, I don't want anybody to touch those. Like, it's just a way to be able to make things uh, much more finer grain, much more finer grain controls in those. So in now those you boxes. don't have to disable a service for everyone. You can disable it for individual. Exactly, exactly. It, probably the better way to. Uh, it, so you certainly can do that. You can specify that like only these people can touch this thing, right? Yeah. And, and just uh, we'll get into a lot of it with the demo. I think the picture will really paint oh, a you thousand have a demo words. For I me. do. Yeah, for sure. Am you want to see this demo? You know. Let me think. Yeah, All of right. course I want to see a demo. All um, right, everybody loves demos, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's switch it over. Okay. There you go. So I'm going to kind of do split screen here, right? The screen on the left uh, with, with Firefox, if that makes it easier to keep track of, that's going to be like our central administrator, right? This is the, this is the person that's, uh, you know, the, the kind of the, the central cloud team. Okay. And then uh, in Chrome on the right, this is going to be what I'm going to, the persona I'm going to call the local administrator. So like this is down in one of those specific accounts. It could be anywhere from a developer that was just getting free control over their own AWS account, or it could one be one can dream, right? One can dream, <laughs> uh, or it could be uh, you know like a business unit level administrator that, that's in this account, right? It, like, Honestly, that level of detail. I want to be matter. this developer. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's let's uh, the first use case will be let's say we want, we're a European company. We're very concerned in this day and age of data sovereignty and GDPR. GDPR. That's all you got to say. And we want we want to make sure that uh, our our developers can only launch resources in the European European regions, right? Okay. And so, like today, uh, you know, without, with, you know, so just to just to make sure, just to show that I'm not smoking mirrors or anything here, right? <laughs> uh, let's go, and we're just going to do a simple launch. We're going to launch an instance. You'll notice I'm in the Oregon region, right? So I'm well outside. I'm on the other side of the pond. Uh, we'll go grab a nice beefy one because that'll come into play later. So you can launch anything right now. I can, right? Anywhere, any place. Uh, every developer's dream. Uh, we'll, we'll just change, yeah, really change the security group dream. so I don't create a new one arbitrarily. All right, so so we'll go ahead and launch that. I'm not even going to bother with a key pair. Not not particularly relevant, right? So yes, nope. I get. All right, so now we have just violated GDPR in like one fell swoop, right? Uh, <laughs> not, not not good. Um, I'm gonna have to see that again. Okay, no, so I'm let's so now let's go in and we're gonna. This is the policy we're gonna apply, right? And. I'll explain it in a second, but essentially, this is using uh, two of the three new features that I mentioned. First is not action, right? So this part of the policy is going to basically say that this deny statement applies to everything except these things. Got now, it. the reason oh, nice. these four are, are special and unique here is services like IAM, services like Wrath of 53 with DNS. They're Those like are global, global services, right? So S3. Uh, so S3 is not exactly in that list, right? It does have some global aspects, but uh, but those are the ones that we like. If we were to shut those down and say that you can't use these outside of those European regions, then a lot of stuff would break, right? Okay. Uh, but we say aside from those, so now it applies to every other AWS service out there. Uh, the region has to be, uh, you know, these two, right? It's Frankfurt. And uh, I don't recall off the top of my mind what US, uh, EU West one is, but um, but let's, uh, oh, let's. So the condition is string not equals. Yeah, and the key part is this requested region, right? So this is the region in which the API call uh, was issued to. So Got this it. policy says, if it's not one of those four services, uh, if it's not in one of these two regions, it's deny no. everything. Deny everything, right? So let's take that. Now we're going to flip over here, and so the first step, right, is in my uh, is in my central administrator, right. So I'm now looking at the organization's console. I'm going to go into policies. I'm going to create a new policy here, right. And just out of you know out of speed, I'm just going to drop that in, right. And let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger, just because that doesn't seem terribly readable. 
so we'll take that, right? Just give it a simple name, simple description, and I'm going to create that policy. Okay. All right. And so now, now I've got it. Now it's ready to use. But now I need to apply it to either my entirety of my organization, a uh, certain organizational unit, or a particular account. Uh, and so for just uh, ease of uh, demonstration here, right? I'm going to go down and I'm going to apply it to this uh, this Dev2 account of mine. So, so just you. Just me, right? And so now all I need to do is attach this policy, right? Uh, Okay, so now if the, if the uh, eventually consistent gods are with me, uh, by the time we flip back over here. Which, we, if you go back for a second, sure. there's two policies there? Yes. So does one take precedence over the other, or how does that work? So this is using the standard AWS philosophy of explicit deny trumps all, right? Just and to so check. the way you would think about these new granular policies is you want to have one broad one that specifies everything that people can do, yep. right. and then you layer in these denies that box out the guardrails that you want to implement. Kay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so uh, I've got that applied now, and now when I go back, and I'm just going to do, uh, let's go back and do the same thing uh, that I just tried to do before, right? So you can see actually already now, I'm actually not even able to do the describe of on that uh, instance. Uh, in that region, right? And so uh, I, I trust that uh, you, know, you don't need me, me, need me to go through the full launch uh, <laughs> sequence, right? But so all API calls for, well, we'll do it just for fun, right? So. I'll, I'll take the same thing. You can see, like, we're getting, like, actually, it, it, actually, I can't even get up to the point where I'm going to launch everything because because everything is shut down in but that region. But if you region. change regions, you shouldn't yeah. have an issue. So now let's go back over to the right side of the, or the correct side of the pond, at least as this uh, example would go. We'll go into Frankfurt, and then we'll, uh, we'll launch the same thing. We'll get a lot farther this time. Yeah, uh, exactly. So we'll grab the same like M5, whatever it may be. We'll review and launch. I always just hate like new security groups being created for no good reason. So I'll grab that one. And then I'm not going to bother with a key pair because it's not the point of this demo. And boom, there we go. And so now we've essentially, think of it again. That's just the first most salient use case. It's one that financial services customers, European customers, customers all over the world have been just, just been desperate for this. Like, yeah. we want a light switch that turns on and off AWS regions, and, and so that was that's the first one. Right? Let's see the next one. All right, cool. Uh, so, so we had a, before we had a question from Twitch. Could I go as granular? Uh, this is O sleep or zero sleep, probably. Okay. Could I go as granular as preventing launch of certain EC2 instance types? Oh, sleep, we have got a treat for you. That, oh. is, that is demo number three, right? It's like, yeah. coming up. I know, he it's like softball, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's just teed up there. Okay, so let's go to the, so the second one uh, that I think really highlights the power here is let's imagine we're in an organization where we've got a central team and they need to push some IM roles into these accounts that like, it's for the security team, right? Like if in the worst moment, like we got to make sure that those, like we can get in and operate with those, okay. right? But we want to give like very broad control to that developer in, uh, in the account. So let's think of this use case as I want to be able to provide somebody very strong uh, IAM administration capabilities in the account, but I still want to make sure they don't, they don't hit those central roles, right? Okay. And so if I go back here, and again, I'm that local admin again, this time I'm going to switch over to I am. I'm going to find this uh, centralized this role, right? The central admin role, right? This is the one I don't want anybody to, to muck with, okay. right? Uh, and for looking at the clock and for sake of time, I'm going to. I'm gonna, you trust me that right now the way I've got it set up, if I wanted to modify this policy, I could do whatever I want with right. it, right? And so now let's flip over again. Uh, and you know this is logic. Like if I was that developer and I really wanted to kick the security guy out, maybe I'd put <laughs> a policy like that on him, right? Like sure. just deny everything. Uh, but so let's uh, let's go and our second service control policy. Let's grab something like this. And this is a fancy way of basically saying, hey, you're not going to be allowed to touch this role called central admin, unless, or use it to do anything. Yeah, unless you're central admin, right? So it's uh, and so we'll we'll do the same thing. We're going to flip over on the, the central side first. I'm going to create a new policy. All right, we'll drop this in there. 
you know, I don't know that I'm going to have a ton of time to, to highlight it today, uh, but uh, I would say that this new visual uh, policy editor that we dropped in there is another super cool part of the the, the release, right? It's it's like expert oh, mode cool. and it's like expert mode and you, uh, newbie mode like side by side. That's right? really nice. Which is uh, which has been a a new thing. All right, so I'm going to create that policy. All right, and then we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll go back and we'll apply Attach that. Attach it to an account. Yeah, we got to do that. Apply to that same one. Just drilling through my tree here. And then we'll attach this policy, All right? And again, uh, we'll let uh, the eventual consistent guides catch up for just a second, right? As I as I flip over. Uh, but now, if I wanted, like, if I'm that, if that, I'm that sinister developer, and I wanted to lock out the security team, right? And I want to go in here, and I want to add my inline policy. Pop over. Yeah, you know, I might. Are you going to be able to do that? I don't think well, the, so. Well, this is the. If, again, if the if the demo guys uh, succeed, uh, lock out. Uh, we should not, right? Because this is right. And so uh, there you go. So now, I gave full autonomy. That local developer has star star type privileges, uh, but is still not able to touch the centralized account. Right? Awesome. And then the last one, I'm going to probably just show the policy because I see we're getting short on time. But this is the the question that came in, right? So. Uh, let's say I wanted to give a whole bunch of folks great free reign, but I want to keep cost under control. I might apply a policy that looks something like this that says, hey, they're, they're again, they're allowed to do run instances, but we want to lock them down to specific instance types. Uh, right. The key is that essentially anything that's uh, valid within IAM policy language in those conditions, you can now use. That's awesome. Where can our viewers go to learn more about Absolutely. AWS organizations? Absolutely. So there's, a, there was a, you know, we launched, we put out a blog post, right, uh, by Michael uh, when we launched this two days we ago. We will drop this in the chat. Yeah, and then there's also the other great reference is there's these example policies that are now up on the organization's website that kind of show all the the examples I showed and a whole bunch more. Awesome. We'll drop this in the chat momentarily. Thank you so much, Thanks Quinn, for, for joining me. us. Thanks to my lovely co-host, Sam. Always here. We'll be back for more content. See you guys soon. Super cool. Thanks, guys.